And so, Father, we want to thank you so very much for what you've done for us. You're faithful, you're mighty, you're our God, our Father. All good and perfect gifts are from above, from home, um, all life laws. The Father of light, in whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. We appreciate you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the name of Jesus. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the spirit of God. Thank you for giving us angels charge over us to keep us in all of our ways. Thank you for the body of Christ. Thank you for the church of God. Thank you for the fivefold ministry. Thank you for calling us. Thank you for making us. Thank you for heaven that you have prepared for us. Thank you for Jesus that you are giving unto us. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is in your perfect will that you made us to know you. It's not by our power. It's not because we are smarter than others. Thank you for preparing us for something great that is going to happen. Thank you for your hand upon our life. Thank you because you are the one that rules and reign all over the world. Father, you uphold all things by the word of your power. You are upholding all things. This ball called the earth is upheld by you. The galaxies, oh God, the universe are in control because of your power. We worship your majesty. You can never fail. You can never change. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You're always there for us. There is never a time we call you 12 midnight, 1 a.m., 1 p.m., 2 a.m. that we call you, that we say God has gone to the bathroom, God has gone to the restroom, or God is having a meeting with somebody else. How can 8 billion people be asking you for things at the same time and you can answer everybody individually, even those who doesn't ask you? Lord, you remember when to send rain according to fixed time. You know when to send snow. You know when to send... Um, fresh air Jesus we are grateful you are worthy of our praise you are worthy of our thanksgiving you are just righteous you are too good you have been good to Israel Psalm 73 verse 1 truly God has been good to Israel you've been good to me you've been good to my wife my children you've been good to God's remnant assembly you've been good to I pass on church truly ah, what shall I render what shall I render? I will take the cup of salvation to the Lord for all. What shall I render to the Lord for all his goodness, for all his goodness in my life? Lord, we thank you. We are here just because we want to appreciate you. All this is, is for all this is for you. Lord, please have your way. Be glorified. Let every viewer, let them have divine encounter with your word today. Please, Jesus, change us, perfect us transform us reveal your will your plan and your purpose to us take the will of man out oh god out take the man show of man take the picture of man let jesus be glorified let jesus and jesus alone be seen we give you all the praise and glory for this hypersonic church and we thank you for what you're doing in our lives in jesus mighty awesome name we pray amen now we want to give god thanks this is the third Sunday in the month of Simeon. Simeon means the one that has on here. You know, um, by revelation, customarily, we name our months um, according to the uh, 12 sons of Jacob, starting from Reuben. The ending is Re uh, Benjamin. Reuben, uh, and January, and Benjamin, uh, December. Second son, Simeon. Third son, Levi. Fourth, Judah. So forth and, and, and on, you know. Um, and so, Dan, Naphtali, all that. And so, um, and this is Simeon. February, we are very grateful. And uh, thank God for uh, part one of four, part two of four. This is part three of four. May God be glorified. We're looking at uh, the perfection books, was John. I think we've done a little uh, study to James. So I'm hoping that after this first John, we can able to can be able to go to something else. I don't know, maybe for second John or third John, or we can go to first Peter, you know, and, um, or, you know, what? Uh, maybe we can go to the book of Hebrews. Hey, we just want the Holy Spirit to lead us. <laughs> I love Hebrews, man. I just love it. And one thing about Hebrews is that we cannot rush it. I'm telling you those 13 solid chapters, let's just, we just be banking. Maybe we just do it for the rest of the year or something like that. You know, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I love it. Now, first John, look at what it says. 
chapter 2. Now we begin to read from uh, verse uh, verse, uh, verse, verse 7, verse 7. Now last week we talked about the feet of Jesus, walking, 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 even as he walked. So there's no, there's no, there's nothing like, oh my God, I can't catch up with God. You will catch up. Why? Because you are in him. He's the one who told us the works that I do, you shall do. Greater works than these shall you do also. We are in him. You are in Christ. Please, can you have that mentality? Please. When you have those bad dreams and all that, the devil, the devil wants you to think that you are outside of Christ. No, you can't pursue me in Christ. Wake up in the morning, give it to the devil. Get out! Get out of my life! How dare you get inside Jesus? We don't need no meat. You don't need to be here. In him. In him. Don't, don't, don't go to Job and, and, and give me that where Job was there. Job was a servant. He was a servant. You are a son. Uh, have you considered my servant? God will never refer to you as a servant. Have you considered my son? That's why even John said, my little children. You know? So, <laughs> God will not allow Satan to come into the meeting. These are, you know, you know, listen. Your plumber can come in, but he won't sleep in your house. He's coming in there to walk. Those are servants. When your child gets in, imagine the way your child, you have a child who's three years old, how he gets on your, jump on your bed when you and your wife are sleeping. You just jump on your bed, jump on your head, and then, you know, he doesn't have to say, Daddy, can I come on the bed? No, that's, that's, that's who you are. A son and a daughter of God. And in that bedroom, the devil is not allowed. In the name of Jesus, no one of us will be visited with evil in Jesus' name. Now, verse 7, second, first John chapter 2, verse 7. Brethren, hey, my little children. Now he has turned to brethren. <laughs> he expects you to have grown. He expects you to have grown. Walking as he walked makes you grow. Brethren, brothers and sisters, plural, I write unto you, not plural, but, but mixed. Brothers, sisters, equals brethren. I write no new commandment unto you. He said, listen. Um, one of my sons, the Lord, was saying something. He was saying that uh, um, from the beginning it was not so. I love what he said. He said, because from the beginning it was not so. It's, it's beautiful. And this is what John was saying. He said, this thing I'm telling you is not a new command. So please don't, don't, don't be looking at me today and say, what's this new thing? This is no new commandment. The last time Jesus gave us a new commandment was in John chapter 13, verse 34, where he said, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. You know that Jesus upgraded the second commandment. The second commandment, second commandment says, Love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus realized that, ah, <laughs> Some people don't even love themselves. They don't even love their wife because they don't see their wife as themselves. And so God says, no, let me upgrade this thing so that these guys won't quote me. Before I go, let me upgrade it. A new commandment. And I don't think we always confess it. I give unto you that ye love one another as I have. Not just husband loving wife and giving himself for his wife alone. Any other brother, any other sister. That you also love one another. John 13, 34. Take note of that now. In verse 7, he said, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which he had had from the I love that the John Apostle John. He always referred back to the to the beginning. So that also tells you that there is no no fad, no new fad, no new thing. Like hey, is a new thing, is a new thing now that everybody's driving into. Hey, let us, we can present it in a new way, but the hold remains the hold. Please, please, please. You can't wake up in the morning and sit on a the, on the, on the chair and say, I dad, and, and give your dad I five. No, or tell your dad, hey dad, can you get me a cup of coffee there? <laughs> and that's, let's go back to the old commandments, please. Huh? Let's go back to the whole commandment, male and female created at him, all those old commandments. Please, he said, this is not something new. The whole commandment is the word which ye have had from the beginning. How can you survive without even knowing the principle of Genesis? G Genesis gene. 
gene, gene, genealogy, genesis, beginning, phase, genesis, phase. Mm -hmm. The beginning, genesis, in the beginning, God, not the devil. In the beginning, God. The whole commandment is the word which we have. Don't let anybody introduce something new or tamper with what has been written. I'm begging you. Let me tell you something. If I cannot prove it from you from scripture, drop it. If I cannot prove it for you from the Holy Bible, drop it. That is to say, if nobody can prove it to you from scripture, drop it. Drop it. The beginning. Every one of us must be able to say that to everyone. But if they show you from scripture, that's rooted to the beginning and the ending, Genesis to Revelation, that packet, that package, that Alpha and Omega package, come on, man. It's not a new commandment. Now, eight, he has to say it again. Again, a new commandment I write unto you. I thought you said you don't write a new commandment to us. Now you're saying you write a new commandment to us. Which thing is true in him and in you? Because the darkness is past and the true light now shining. You know what he's saying here? He say, now listen, I'm not writing a new commandment for you. But this new commandment is what I'm giving you. Now, why is he saying that? He's saying that you are receiving it as new. But this thing is not new. It's been there. It told you is new because you're just hearing or you just want to start practicing right now. There are some certain things you have to start doing right now. It might look new to you, but it's not new. Excuse me. You know what? Enoch did it. Noah did it. Paul did it. Peter did it. James did it. Malachi did it. Jeremiah did it. If you are if you're telling you right now that start loving God, start knowing God, Jeremiah started his own, started his own when he was a young guy. He said, don't say you are a youth. Don't ever even say it. Don't say it. That's, oh, that's, that's, to you it might be, oh my God, why are you asking me to do all this thing? Ah, Samuel did it now. Samuel did it when he was young. You know, so don't say it's new. <laughs> you are just receiving as new. You know, for example, you know, um, organochemistry, organic chemistry is not new. But when you get to high school, they, they said, well, it's time for organic chemistry or college. You'll be seen as new. Oh, I'm having this new class now. What's the new class? Organochemistry. Oh, somebody that's already a lecturer or a professor will be telling, ah, that's not a new thing. I did that one about, about um, 15 years ago. Where it's been there. <laughs> it might have been updated, but hey, listen, I did organochemistry too. You know, it's not a new thing. So it's saying that uh, this is true. Which thing is true in him and in you? Because the darkness is past and the true light now shall All the dark life, all those things we used to do is already past. Yeah, the, the, the people that see you right now must be, must be able to say, what? They seen you about three years ago before you were born again. Now they see you, they say, what? All those things are gone. It's no more you, it's past. Because everything you are doing right now is light and the light must shine. The light shine it in darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it. It was the same John who wrote it. John, when you see John, John never play with things like love, new commandment, light, life. Those are his, those are his words, the key words. Now in verse 9, he that see it is in the light and eat it. Now that's why I say it's perfection book, practicality. How do you know you are not walking in darkness? You cannot Eight, your brother. Please read with me. Please read with me. Verse 9. He that said is in the light and ate his brother is in darkness even until this time you are listening to this message this Sunday from 10 to 11 a.m. on this Sunday. Ah, no wonder you are having interference from the powers of darkness just by hating your brother who do you hate tell me be sincere who do you hate because hey this person dumped you he broke off from you 
you greeted him he did not respond um i don't know your boss i mean not not really your boss but he's talking about brother christian family you can't even hate people that you should minister to and preach to you gotta love them <laughs> for god to love the word the word is unlovable but god has to love them to preach to them you know but here he said, he that hated his brother is in, I thought he would say he's going to get inside darkness. He said, you have moved yourself inside darkness, even until there's a spiritual darkness around you. There's a spiritual darkness. So you wonder why the bad dreams, you wonder why you are not getting direction. You are confused because you can't get direction inside the dark. Yeah. It's in darkness even until now. Yesterday we had a meeting in church. Somebody there was discouraged, was praying, and, uh, you know, he, he, and before you know it, we wake up this morning. Somebody called and said, hey, You are in a real estate program, okay? Um, they have a company or you know, a house for you to sell anyway. She went home with $64,000 today. <laughs> she said, no, I'm happy, I'm happy, hallelujah. I said, hey, listen, you are saying hallelujah. Why can't you be saying it when things are not good? Don't get in the dark. God cannot forget about you. He cannot. He said, he's in darkness even until now. He that loveth is broader. Wow, this is a perfection book, so. Wow. I thought we were going to be getting into difficult thing like I need revelation. I know practicality. He that loveth his brother, his sister, abided in the... I don't want to get into darkness, oh, man. I don't want it. I got to... If you're a brother, I love you. You can hate. Hate speech. Hate presentation. Hateful presentation. Hateful defamation. You can't do all those things. I'm begging you. This is not funny. It's not um, popularity. It's not followership. Stop it. You are walking in the darkness. What happens if you are driving in the dark and you don't have headlamp and it's in the night? It makes you not to go forward if you don't want to have head on collision with something. Hey, what are you going to collide with? What's the devil planning for you for the year 2024? Stop hating your brother. One of the reasons why, one of the ways in which you don't hate your brother is to pray for them. Even if there is a reason why you cannot relate with them, relationship, start praying for them. Hey, the praying we are talking about is not a 24-hour prayer. As often as you remember that hatred, pray, Lord Jesus. I ask life for my brother. I just, I just pray. Just have mercy on me. Help me to love this person. And if you cannot pray, you understand. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Mention their name. They don't have to be there. They don't have to be there because it's. You see, now your your brother is having fun. Your brother is doing whatever they are doing. You are the one that is in darkness. Your brother don't even know nothing. He's enjoying himself, having fun, doing whatever he's praying. He's seeking God's face. He's enjoying himself. While he's enjoying himself, you that you hate him, you are in darkness. And the darkness you are in is up till now. As I'm talking now. Ah, wow. No wonder he said we should ask for forgiveness of sins. Wow, it's, 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 it's tough. He that loveth his brother abided in the light and there is no occasion of stumbling in him. God promise if you are walking in the light between now and the time Jesus will return, you will never stumble. What makes people to stumble? You're walking, you're in a room, they put something along your path, a desk, a block, or whatever, and you, know, you did not know it's there and you stumble. That is what the devil has been waiting for. He wants you to stumble and fall down and die. He wants you to stumble into a mess. He wants you to stumble into a mistake and error that will claim your life. You will not stumble and find yourself in jail in Jesus' name. That's the devil. He wants to place some, something along your path. You won't see it. We call it stumbling blocks. Ah, oh, Jesus. 
Ah, ah. Don't let anybody get you to hate them. Please. This is a family, my little children. It's a family. Nobody can call you children except it's your father. Please don't let anybody get you. Don't become king. He's going to talk, tell us about king very shortly. Don't kill your brother. Stumbling. Stumbling blocks. Imagine how many stumbling blocks the devil has set for a lot of people so that they will not only die physically, but they're going to go to hell. He's going to tell you now that no murderer can, can have part in eternal life. These are perfection books. Please. You cannot hate me. I can't hate you. Sorry. I'm a brother. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, man. Oh, I love Jesus. It's too late. We are one big family. Ah, Jesus is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. You will not stumble in Jesus' name. Oh, you will not stumble. I will not stumble. My wife will not stumble. My children will not stumble. GRA family will not stumble. I personally, church family, we will not stumble in the name of Jesus. Verse 11. But he that ate his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness. You know, talking about darkness is not funny. There is a power that rules darkness. John told us, or I'm sorry, James told us, in him there is no darkness at all. To be in the dark is to be in the devil. There's no light in the devil. He's a liar. He that hated his brother is in dark. This guy didn't do anything like any act of the sin of commission. He just ate his brother. And hatred is of the heart, it's not of the mouth. You see, you can hug people, kiss people, embrace people. With your hand, you can smile at people. But hatred is of the heart. This is a perfection book. Hatred. That hatred. That hatred. That I just hate her. What makes people to hate when people are going forward? It seems as if they are taking your place. It seems as if they are the only one sharing testimony. It seems as if they are the only one blessed. And you just develop hatred. Some of these people, you don't even know them. Like, no, like, no. You know their name. You don't even know them. Or somebody told you something about something about them. And say, see, see, see what he has done. See. And based on that notion, you have a preconceived idea about this individual and you just hate them for not knowing them. You don't know them and you hate them. Ah, ah. And you are going to preach, you are going to quote scripture, you are going to pray, you are going to fast, you are going to give. You are giving in darkness. Everything you are doing is in darkness. It's not acceptable because in God there is no darkness at all. Mm, 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 mm. Do you see the reason why we pray, 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 pray? We are not getting answer. We're in darkness. Oh, Lord, I will not be in darkness in Jesus' name. Hey, for hating. And you did not know. You did not know. Who do you hate? Brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so, your brother, your sister. You have no reason to hate them. You have to pray for them. No, Jesus doesn't hate. Look at what it says. He said, he said, Verse 11, but he that hated his brother is in darkness and walking in darkness and knowing not whither he goeth because that darkness has blinded his eyes. So if you are in darkness, you will not have divine direction in life. All the vision you wrote down for 2024 is wrong. Hey! It's wrong. No, it's not. God did not lead you. You better tear it and start loving your brother. And go back to God to give you real vision. That's why those visions are not coming to pass. You can't know if you can't have direction inside darkness. Where are you going? Why would you know the kind of job God wants for you? That's why you keep applying for jobs. When really there are jobs that's got already positioned there. You don't know which one. It's in the dark. You don't know who to marry. It's in the dark. You don't know where to go. It's in the dark. Hey, somebody come to see, hey, sis, you are the one I'm getting married to. I'm telling if you're in the light, you're supposed to pick it up and say, just for. Just for respect's sake, give me two weeks or three weeks. Let me pray about it. But really, you're not praying about it. You already know why you're in the light. 
You don't need 10 years of prayer. Oh, you don't need six weeks. It's too long. Abba, you are, you are inside God. The person is inside God. God told you. God told the person. And you are in the light. You don't walk in a tread. Ah, uh ah. -uh. It's divine direction. The business you're supposed to do, you will not miss it in life. So that somebody will not, you know, just, 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 just waste you, you know, and uh, just toss you around. There is no way anybody can cheat you. There is no way anybody can deceive you because you are in the light. Uh, you will not stumble. He said, because that darkness has blinded. So we're supposed to, our, the eyes of our understanding are supposed to be opened. Your children are not supposed to be deceiving you. They told you some lies, which they're not supposed to. You pick it up. <laughs> you can't tell me lies. I saw you there. Let me tell you what you did. Let me tell you the good things you did. Not just, not just bad things. You need to reinforce children. Let me tell you the, the, the things that you did that are not supposed to, you're not supposed to do. You know? Now look at verse 12. There you go. <laughs> ah, Lord, please, I just thank God for the wisdom of Apostle John. Please. He's a old man now. He was a old man. I just love the way he's pushing it in. He's pushing it in chapter one. He, he welcomed them. Chapter two, he starts pushing it in like, like a little nail. <laughs> huh? Now, these guys, when they are reading this letter, everybody will be quiet. You know why they'll be quiet? They, they, hate, they hate each other. So they'll be quiet. <laughs> um, John gave it to them. He said, you are, you are, you're blind. Now, in verse 12, he said, this letter you're about to open, <laughs> little children, uh, okay, this is your own portion. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you, not because of anything, just because of his name. Little children will be pardoned. They don't know what they are doing. And hey, listen to me. Little children doesn't have access to the blessings. As a matter of fact, the Bible says they are under tutors and governors. A little child cannot go to the kitchen to cook for himself. Somebody has to cook for you, taste the food. You see how some, some servant or some child minders, the way they handle little children, they will dress for you, though your daddy is the owner. <laughs> you can. They will, they will cook. They will give you the food that your mother gave you. No, no begging. Your mother say, excuse me, I don't want him to go out. They won't let you go out. No, you ain't going nowhere. Are you my father? I'm not your father. But your daddy told me that you should not go out. You can't use the phone. Why? Your daddy said you cannot use the phone. It's good to be a little child. But for how long? For how long would you be a little child? I write unto you, little children. And this is, these are your characteristics. Because you're a little child, this is something that would be known of you. Your sins are forgiven. For his name's sake. So in the name of the Lord Jesus, all little children that are watching me, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven by the blood of Jesus for his name's sake. If we destroy little children because they commit sin, then we are not going to have a future. If we destroy little children, then we are not going to have a future. This is a very good verse for good shepherds. Please. Oh, so daddy, why do you do that? Why do you accept him back? Why did Ah, it's a little child. It's a little child. He might be an adult, but he doesn't know God. We don't have a future. If all the children die now, what's going to be our future? God forbid. What's going to be the future of the body of Christ? Please, church growth is very important. So in the church, you're going to see little children doing stuff. Hey, you know what God says? If they have a father praying for them, saying, Father, forgive them. They are little children. 
They don't know what they are doing. Please, sir, please, just forgive them. Forgive them. Just forgive them. Father, please forgive all my children. Please forgive them. Forgive them. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not preaching. I'm praying now. Father, forgive my children. Forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. Forgive them. Please forgive them. Please forgive. I wish that David had not died when Solomon began to mess up. Could you imagine what David would do for Solomon? As a matter of fact, God told Solomon, he said, he, God told David, he said, if your children mess up, I will beat them, but I will not destroy them. I will not take my mercy away from them because of what you, their dad, has done. Church growth. Have compassion. Have mercy. God had compassion on you. God had compassion on me. You know what I used to do when I was a little child in Christ? I'll be deceiving myself to tell you I became a saint the following day. I will be telling you lies. And God says, the truth is not in you. I wasn't where I am. See, I have all kinds of things I was battling with. But I thank God because I can always run to the blood of Jesus. And he forgive me my sins for his namesake. Don't let anybody accuse you and destroy you. Because of the things you did. Why? Because you're a little child. Now, you shouldn't remain a child. We're going to go there. Not today. The woman caught in adultery. It was a little child. She was a woman, but she was a little child. What do you think Jesus will do for her? Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, that's it. You know what Jesus is going to say? Go, sin no more. Oh, before he said, go, sin no more. Has anyone condemned you? I'm not. I've not condemned you. The man that was at the pool of Bethesda, 38 years, Jesus said, go sin. He healed him. He healed him and said, sin no more, less worse things. But he healed him first. He healed him first. The man, the paralytic man, who got paralyzed because of sin, the first thing Jesus said to him was, your sins are forgiven. And a lot of people have problems. They have problem. Who is this man that can forgive sins? So you're watching me today and you just got born again and you are in and out because Satan is kind of taking advantage of you. Today, in the name of Jesus, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. And you know what? God is going to make you to grow as you give yourself to the word and you eat the word of life. You will grow out of that level and you get to another level. I ride unto you Little children, I thought, I thought he's going to say because, because what? He only say because your sins are forgiving you for his name's sake. Maybe you've been walking in hatred that he talked about. He said, you're not going to do that anymore. The one you've done in the past is over. So let me talk to you. You'll get, you, you, you're hating that boy right now because you think he's supposed to come and propose to you or he's going smack on something or somebody or you just you just start developing hatred because somebody's having a testimony or somebody's accepted or somebody talked to you anyhow you know what john says if that hatred is in you you are a little child those are the things that should be found among little children he said but from today your sins from today because you ain't you ain't gonna walk in darkness anymore the season and the era of darkness and confusion and satan giving you all kinds of blows. He said, who, 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 who hit me? Who hit me? Who hit me? Why? You can't see the person. He's the one messing with you, messing with your life. Jesus said, those days are over. Lord, I'm very thankful for the instructions you've given us today, the third week of February. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, our King. He said, because your sins are forgiven. If you are there, and God has really touched your heart. You have problem with sister X. You have problem with brother Y. If you cannot really live with them, can you let them go? Can you forgive them? Can you not aid them? Please. Who would you meet at the door? That your, 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 love, your heart rate will increase. Who will sit close to you that you have to tell the usher, please, and you need to move me out of this place. Is there somebody like that? That you don't talk to you. You talk to them, but really deep down in your heart, you can't flow. Come on, come on. Don't be in darkness anymore. You are the one delaying your future. You are the one delaying your advancement. Please, I beg you. This walk is very sensitive. Please, I beg you. Please don't end up your, your life in hell just for hating somebody. Please, please, let them go. Now, if you don't know Jesus, 
There's no way you can even know the difference between hatred and love. Pray this prayer. Say, my father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you this day to surrender my life. Forgive me my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Purify my heart. I surrender my life to you. Let the spirit of hate jump out of my life. Fill me with the spirit of love and forgiveness. I will no more walk in, the, in darkness. The light of life will be shining in my life. From today, I, I just surrender my life to you. I'm surrounded in light. I have direction in life. I will see you. I will know you. I will hear you. I will obey you for the rest of my life. And if you're there, you backslided, something happened one way or the other, ask God to get, take you back. Pray by yourself. Lord, take this individual back. Get them back in the light. You will see what will happen. Even when you sleep tonight, the dream and the vision God will show you. You will have direction. You'll see that your ears that has been blocked to hearing God. God will open your ears. You begin to hear God again. Then you will realize the joy of salvation will swell within you again. Congratulations. And Lord, we thank you again for what you have done for the Apostolic Church family of God's Roman Assembly worldwide. We're very grateful. We're not taking this for granted. Thank you for the gift of this book and this letter that you have written unto us that our joy may be full. Now we know that maybe before now we've been walking in darkness and we know the reason why we, our life don't have direction, why maybe we don't, we don't have breakthrough financially, job, you know, marriage, you know, you know, in our future, there's nothing happening to us. We pray we're not getting an answer. Now we know, wow, it might be hatred. Yes. Now we have direction. The light is shining and darkness is out. The light shineth in darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it. Take all the glory. Thank you for your blessing in our lives. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, God bless you. Make his face to shine upon you. And shalom.